Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon. If you're on this early, you are probably watching the replay and um, probably not catching me live right now. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. I cannot even tell you how much I appreciate that you take the time to listen to me every week or whenever you do. For those of you who've never watched me before, my name is Evelyn Knight. I am the host of the Child Care Business Coach Podcast. I am the owner and founder of Child Care Business Professionals, which is a company that helps owners learn how to balance life, find success, and uh, turn a profit in their child care centers. I know what it's like to be an owner that just feels like a complete mess, to be honest with you. And um, I've been there. I've done that. My center has been just a nightmare in the past. It was um, just... I know, I know what it feels like, you guys. That's all I can say. I was there before I sought out the knowledge myself to learn how to have a successful childcare center that it's also high quality. Um, so I get it. I'm in the trenches still. I'm still an owner. I I can relate. And that's what I want to talk to you today about. And I'll tell you, I had a whole speech planned out about time management but I kind of changed my mind this morning about what I want to talk to you guys about. Um, it just from the comments, the messages I'm getting, different discussions I see on Facebook groups, all the different things I'm hearing and seeing right now, literally this morning as I was getting ready, I just decided, you know, they don't need to hear about time management. They, they need to hear something else right now. And I, I feel the same way right now where we are all in this, I don't know, it feels like a frenzy again, right? When we first started COVID, it felt like we were in a frenzy. And here we are again, it just kind of, it feels heavy and stressful all over again. And we're in this again. And so I just want to talk to you guys a little bit about holding it together, right? We all have a hard time sometimes. And I think we feel like we have to be super women or super men, super women as a type personalities. If you're an owner or a director, you are an a type personality. You're a leader. It leaders, people who tend to lead, we're a type personalities. And as a type personalities, we feel like we have to have it together all the time. We feel like we have to just really push through everything. And sometimes that gets hard. And so I wanted to just be open, honest, and transparent with you guys today a little bit more about what my life is and what I'm going through and how hard sometimes it is just to hold it together. Um, for those of you who are newer to me, you may not know, but my husband has end-stage kidney disease. He is on a hemodialysis back in January. His, um, he was on peritoneal dialysis, which we can do from home. And it failed. It no longer, it, it just stopped working. And so um, he spent about a little over a week in the hospital when they just pretty much tried to figure out what's going on with him. Uh, why is the dialysis not working anymore? And they had to switch him over to, if you're not familiar with dialysis, it's basically a totally different type of dialysis that is in a clinic and can be pretty difficult to manage. Um, Last January, the January before, he had a series, between December and January, he had a series of three strokes. And it um, basically, it was an insane time for me. Uh, the first couple strokes, I knew. I just, you know, I'm a huge believer in following your gut. And I knew he had a stroke in my heart. I just knew it. I knew it. But I couldn't get any doctors to do a stroke protocol, the stroke protocol. And I could not get them to check for a stroke. He spent several days in the hospital. They let him go home. They It, it was the craziest thing. Um, he even got on an airplane and went on a business trip. And while he was there, um, I was terrified I was going to have to fly and bring him home because he really struggled. But thank God he had a co-worker. Thank God. I, for those of you who don't know, I am a total God girl. And... The things that God has done for me in my life are just amazing. And this is one of those times where my husband was literally stuck on a business trip. Doctors reassured me, oh, he can go. He's fine. He's fine. You know, he just has a little cold. No big deal. My gut told me, no, this is not okay. Something is not right. But, you know, he's stubborn and wanted to do his job. So he went. And um, 
as I'm talking to him at the time, I'm thinking, how is he going to get out? He's not going to be able to make it home. I don't know what I'm going to do. So thank God one of his coworkers was amazing and helped us help us get him home. He was on the business trip with him, thank God. But it literally took him helping us locate a wheelchair, getting my husband out of the hotel, and getting him back home. It was terrifying and scary and um, bringing him home, not knowing what the heck was going on, still can't get doctors to do any stroke protocol. So it was the craziest thing. Finally, it took an ENT, an ear, nose, and throat doctor. He had lost his hearing in one ear completely, and the doctor was about to do surgery. And she looked and found that, I don't know, something just wasn't right, right before, literally went in right before he was supposed to do the surgery. And this was right before COVID, right? This was January of last year, so before everything happened. I was with him right up until she was going to take him back, and she just said, you know, something's not right. I don't feel comfortable going through with the surgery. And he was really upset. He's like, no, I need my hearing back. You have to do it. You have to do it. And she's like, no, something is not right. And she ordered an emergency MRI. Well, that is when we discovered what was really going on. Um, ironically, she sent us home. And I can tell you one of the scariest things I've ever been through. She Before she got the MRI results, she sent us home. Was at 9 p.m. That doctor started calling on her cell phone. When you see a doctor's phone number pop up at 9 p.m. from her cell phone, that's a pretty scary situation. I knew instantly, I knew something huge was happening and this was scary. And when I answered the phone, she immediately said to me, you need to get your husband to the hospital right now, right now. She's like, I don't want to scare you, but you need to get him to the hospital right now. And um, it was terrifying. So long story short, he did have a stroke. It, everybody had been wrong about the whole protocol. Um, so this has been basically the last year and a half of what I've been going through. So when I'm seeing a lot of you and I'm getting these emails from you guys and messages and I'm seeing posts and I get it. I know right now we live in a world where it is really hard some days just to wake up, get dressed and hold it together, right? It is really hard for us just to keep going. Uh, my husband had another surgery on Friday. Uh, we just had the latest series of surgeries that just kind of came out of nowhere. And um, this morning when I woke up, it's, you know, first business day since the surgery. I just had surgery two weeks ago and I just like, was I'm tired. I don't want to do this. I don't want to keep going. And I, so I get it, you guys. I know a lot of times I sit behind this camera and I talk to you guys and I know it feels like we have it all together, but I do understand how it feels owning a business and just not knowing some days, what am I going to do? So I want to tell you guys, what do I do? How do I hold it together? How do I keep going? How do I just keep getting up, going to work when a lot of mornings like this morning when I wake up, I just don't want to do it. I don't. I wake up thinking like, I how am I going to face, what am I going to do? I got to go work. I got to do this video for you guys. I got to do this and that. But it's really about compartmentalizing. No matter how good your mindset is and your mental health and how much mental control you have over your brain, we're still human, right? So those first thoughts we have in the morning are still that part of our brain that is hard to keep under control. So really what I've noticed a lot is many people don't have control over their brains. They just kind of let their brain run wild. It doesn't have, um, you don't think about your thoughts, right? You really just let the thoughts flow without any kind of structure or control. So that's where I have to really stop myself and I have to analyze my thoughts, right? So the first thing I have to do is just, just tell myself like, it's okay. I allow myself to feel, right? You cannot suppress your feelings. You have to let the feelings come out. So when I wake up feeling that way, I do let the feelings out. I do give myself a chunk of time, but I put a time limit on it. So for example, this morning, I knew it was a really heavy feeling. So I told myself, okay, you have 20 minutes, you have 20 minutes. You can feel this for 20 minutes, feel sorry for yourself, do what you need to do. But after that 20 minutes, you need to get up and 
get in gear because your day is going to start. You got to go. So that's pretty much what I do. I just let myself feel. Then after the 20 minutes, that's when I bring in the logic and reasoning and I really check my thoughts. And all, and, and this isn't something that you need to sit down. This is something I did while I showered, just going through my thoughts and really just breaking through and saying, okay, where is this coming from? What's going on? And then you just kind of reason with yourself. Like, you know, I tell myself all the time, I know this feels permanent. I know this feels like your life, but this too shall pass. This is just a temporary situation. Life is 50% good, 50% bad. You're always going to have those seasons of good and those seasons of bad. This is just a hard season, right? But we will get past it. It doesn't mean this is my life. It is a situation in my life. It is a time period in my life that we'll get past, right? So that's something I tell myself too. It's like, we need to do what we need to do. And then I start just kind of taking account for what do I need to do to get by this time? And what is the end result? So one of the things I do all the time too is I project myself into the future. And I ask myself, if I don't take action today, and if I don't do the things I need to do today, what are the results? What's going to happen? Um, once upon a time, when I was really a struggling owner, I used to catch myself in a place where I would just freeze and I would do nothing. And I caused a lot of disasters for myself because I didn't take action. Instead of taking action, I let the overwhelm take me over and I did nothing. And I almost ended up bankrupt because of it. So now instead of that, I just ask myself, I know I'm stressed, I know I'm tired, but if I don't take action today, what bigger problems am I gonna cause for myself in the future, right? So then I analyze that. What bigger mistakes and problems am I going to create if I don't do what I need to do today? So that's the next thing that I go through when after, you know, I let myself have my tantrum and then I logically tell myself, you know, this is the situation. And then I look into the future. If I allow how I feel right now to take over, what are the consequences? What are the end results? Right. Um, so that's when I just realized, like, I've got to do it and I might as well do it with a good attitude and a smile on my face. So how can I come to you guys? every Monday morning with a smile. How do I meet my clients? How do I get you guys through all of what I do? It's because I have to have a good mindset. It is up to me. My mindset is up to me. I can allow all of this to consume me. I can allow this to become my life and I can allow it to just pull me in and just be depressed all the time. But why would I want to live that way? So I have to make a conscious decision and I have to tell myself every day to find those things, right? So I do start my day with um, my blessings, right? I thank God for the things I do have. And I know sometimes life can feel so overwhelming that it can be it can be hard to even find a blessing, right? You can just get in this mindset that, oh my gosh, my life is so bad that there's nothing to be thankful for. So that's when I challenge you. Did you wake up in a bed this morning? Did you wake up with a blanket? Did you wake up to take a nice warm shower? Maybe your hot water heater is out and you didn't. But did you get a glass of water? Because all of that is something to be thankful for. There are a lot of people who did not wake up in a bed this morning, who did not wake up with a roof over their head, who did not wake up with heating, right? And so sometimes I think we get into these pity parties and I've been there, I've been that person, I can tell you firsthand, I used to be very much trapped in a victim's mentality and I've been that person. So now I make sure that I am thankful and I thank God for the littlest things in my life, like the blanket that is covering me, the pillow under my head, because there are some people who don't have that. There are some people who don't get to wake up under a roof, right? There are a lot of people that are struggling and have way less than I do. I am very thankful for those things. And I just remind myself that no matter what is around me and what I'm going through and what I'm struggling with today, my life is still so good. I have amazing children. I've had an almost 30 year marriage and it is just amazing. I have just so much good in my life that no matter what the stressors are, no matter the fact that I take my husband to dialysis, you guys, in a neighboring city three nights a week for four hours from 7 p.m. till midnight, okay? And I have to take, drop him off and pick him up in a neighboring town. 
and that is very stressful but at least i have a car to take me there and do it at least we have that opportunity right and i've got this um i don't know I, when it starts to just feel overwhelming i remind myself how wonderful my life really is and i can't help but be happy when i think about it you know when i think about the love and the support in my life and everything that is here for me i can't help but smile and be happy and that just helps me get through my day every day i also end my days too with gratitude so that i make sure that i sleep peaceful and it's really what we choose to focus on and i can tell you you can train your brain to focus on the positive instead of the negative you just have to really look for it and you'll be amazed you, our lives are all full of blessings if you look for it but if you focus on the struggle and the negative then that is what you're going to focus on all day long, every day, and through your night's sleep, and you're not, you'll just find misery. So that's pretty much how I get up in the morning and get through my days. I just find those blessings, which I'm amazed sometimes when I do these exercises, how blessed I am. The last thing, and probably the most important thing, is the people in your life, um, especially on a professional level. The women I have running my child care center are the most amazing people, and I I couldn't make it without them. There's just no way I could keep going without those ladies. Uh, and I know a lot of you out there thinking like, yeah, well, you got lucky you found them. Yes, I did get lucky and I found them. I did. Thank God. I didn't get lucky. I, I honestly don't believe in luck. I believe God blessed me with them. But there are other people out there, but you as leaders have to look at how are you treating those amazing people in your life because life needs to be reciprocal right my word of the year is reciprocity what i get i have to give back what i give i want to get back right so when you have these amazing people how are you taking care of them right and not just during the bad times, but the good times too. It, you've got to be always, it's always got to be this amazing relationship. So right now, my leadership team and my child care center, I'm pretty absent right now. I'm not there for them right now. I've got so much in my on my plate that a lot of times I can't be there. And there's times like, I can tell you, for example, Thursday. I was supposed to be there Thursday. I told them I would be there. I know they need help with certain things. But then Wednesday evening, my husband's uh, dialysis stopped working. We found out they had to go for surgery. So I had to go take him to get all his surgery prep. And then Friday we had the surgery. And so I wasn't there. I wasn't there Thursday and Friday. I just, this stuff just came at me all of a sudden and I couldn't be there. And when I we were home, I was exhausted and I had other work to do. And I just get overwhelmed. And sometimes I just, I, I'm just not there. And so that's when I know that they're amazing and wonderful and they're going to make it work. They don't really need me as much as um, they think they do sometimes, but I still need to be there for them when I can, right? It's so very important for me to be there for them when I can be there and to show them my gratitude and my appreciation for the fact that they do cover for me. So none of us, on this planet can do this on our own right we need a team of people behind us it takes a village and it's really when you've got that village of people and you get those people that are amazing just hanging on to them and doing everything you can for them in order to make sure that they understand how much you appreciate them uh, which means that you really do need to appreciate them you need to recognize those people and what they contribute to your life and what they give to your center, right? And what they do for you. And you need to show them and really show them authentically how much they mean to you and how much you appreciate them. And honestly, that is the number one key. If everything else I said today, you forget that. So this is the most important thing. Those people in your life that come alongside you and help you when the going gets rough, you've got to hang on to them. And I'm sorry, I am getting emotional, but um, those are the people that you've just got to hang on to and show them how much you appreciate them. And even when times are good, because when times are good is when it's the easiest to not show people what they mean to you, right? And that's the easiest time to lose them. 
So then when you hit those bumps in the road and when life does get hard, you don't have them in your life because you didn't treat them the way you should have during those times of, you know, during the good times, you didn't treat them the way that you should have. So when it's difficult, they're not there for you. I got a message, um, I got another, the last couple of weeks, I've gotten quite a few messages from directors that are just at the end of the rope with their owners and their owners just don't see them, they don't hear them, they're just completely absent uh, or they come in and undermine them. And um, this one in particular really stood out to me where I could tell that this director, her heart is amazing and she loves her center and she's doing everything she can, but she's at her wit's end with her owner. And um, her owner basically doesn't care what she's going through. And when she comes in, she just undermines what she does. And I just thought to myself, wow, this woman has, just in her emails back and forth that I was emailing her, I could feel her passion. I'm like, this woman truly loves the children and her passion is amazing. And this owner has no idea what kind of a jewel she has in her toolkit. And she's gonna lose her. She is gonna lose her because she is not taking care of her and not recognizing her and not appreciating her. We as humans, we need to be appreciated. And so when you have those teachers and staff members and management, whatever it is, that you know are just amazing, do what you can. And it doesn't have to be money, you guys. It can be a heartfelt thank you card, something that's just really sincere. Um, it can be some kind of gift. So for those of you who are like, well, I can't afford to do any more, then write them a letter, give them a card, tell them every day how much you appreciate them. But make sure that you keep those people in your life because we can't do this alone. And that is really what is gonna make you and what's gonna break you. So I'm just going to end it at that today. Like I said, my scripted um, speech I had for you guys today, I just, I don't know, it just didn't feel right. It wasn't what I thought I needed to come here and talk about. So all of that was just off the cuff, <laughs> which I don't normally do. But again, um, if you need anything, feel free to reach out. And uh, I'm gonna be posting some more information. I do have a workshop coming up for you guys soon, a free workshop. I haven't done one in a while. I like to make sure I'm serving my community with these free workshops, but I haven't done one in a while. So there is one coming uh, at the end of this month. And I also will have more information about my conference. I'm so excited about it. I think uh, will be the tickets uh, for our Child Care Business Summit, which is the conference we're hosting in October. They will be going on sale at uh, close to the middle of this month. I've got to get with my partner on that. So be sure to check out my podcast episode. Um, I have a really cool episode coming out next uh, tomorrow, actually, with Connie Wilson, Wilchansky. Sorry, Connie. Um, which her and I are going to be teaming up on some projects I'm excited about. So I hope everybody has a wonderful week and I hope we all just keep persevering and getting through this time. <laughs>